Yo, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to Doki Doki. Alright, now, if my voice gives out a little ways into this, I apologize, but I'm recording this video right after I recorded the other one. Because I am super excited. I really enjoy this game, and it, I'm, it surprises me, honestly, how much I enjoy it. So, let's say we get back into this. Alright, another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable in here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Froggy! Yo, Sayori! Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, but that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But, I guess... It's always the simple things with you, anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Huh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Huh? W why that all of a sudden? No reason. I just wanted to look at it. Uh huh. Sayori nervously retrieved her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill out on the disc. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So, either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some but there's one more thing you're always hungry and so that only leaves one option uh, I give up don't make me feel guilty if you feel guilty that means you deserve to feel guilty <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles huh I didn't notice that she was listening in her face is in the, her book, as always. Uh, no, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Froggy to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Seer. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh... Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my, my book. Uh-huh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution? That! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me into the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> oh. Crap! Ah. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Oh! What was... Huh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. It... Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my... Restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But, then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Eh, <laughs> Natsuki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I put my tongue. <laughs> You're going 
threw a lot over to just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Aw, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yo, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Jeez. Uh, I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up and nudges Sayori off her. Oh. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Mm hmm. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in club room. Eh? Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me? No, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Uh, that's not true. Excuse me? <laughs> Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Ah, oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Huh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all? You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. Why would you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds... That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Froggy. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her cookie, her entire cookie. Yuri is back in her, to her book and Natsuki disappeared in the, the closet. Hey Yuri! Huh? Uh... I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Oh, well, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the con with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher. Uh, Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. That's not creepy at all. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms, especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. 
Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Uh, 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 we're just, uh, Yuri was going to make some tea, so I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We'll just fill in the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to tell... Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Froggy in club activities? Huh? My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Froggy. Oh, damn. She's getting, uh... She's getting an attitude. I like it. Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri? I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It also... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Froggy, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it, at, it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, uh, no. W wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would that would do that? Friend, you say? Uh, uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Froggy, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I love being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walked in the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Froggy, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Froggy. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Froggy, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have a back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. Oh, wait a minute. It's starting to get kind of into the deeper setting here because I'm guessing the reason her back hurts isn't because of the posture. It's because of her past. Something that happened in her past. That's the reason she writes the way she does. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea, Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our side. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies were even closer to each other. I can't see too well. 
Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now, I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. <laughs> oh god. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fundable with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, oh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Uh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Oh, you're right. Didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both her hands. Oh my god, that is so cool. Like, you can see the particles moving too. That is, that's, that's pretty cool. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But, as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate. Now I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. <laughs> Did... <laughs> Did I... <laughs> Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Froggy? Sorry. I, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Oh, that's... Well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has really gotten tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. <laughs> Dude, come on. I raise my arm. Uh. Not before Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I put her hot breath on my fingers. Aww. Uh, damn. Okay, everyone. No. Uh. <sighs> Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Froggy, you can help Yuri put away the tea and stuff, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. Oh man, I've been in those situations before where you're getting all intimate. You're having your moment and all of that, and then all of a sudden, somebody comes in the middle of it, and it just completely goes into the most awkward thing you could ever imagine. Sucks. Pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much the word between us. I got the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Of course, we're going to go with Yuri first. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Froggy, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more Im imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. 
Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really, I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. Aw. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering, no, scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of my bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off, my, off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions on the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic. What is that? Uh. Pelovian? Yeah. Classic Pelovian conditioning. I slice the bread and now feed myself again. I wonder if that's about, um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a can canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Froggy? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, as some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, Froggy. Th that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now, I almost feel like I'll look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It, it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. Just for a moment, her timidness seemed to disappear. Aww. Let's see. Next, we'll head to Monaco. Hi again, Froggy. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I want to count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monaco. Alright. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. 
Or when she's talking about literature. It's like a light turns on inside of her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversations out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers. I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant I wish she didn't keep to herself so much. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Uh huh? You, you completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's always already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispered that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with it. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, uh, red, green, blue. An endless... Cacophony? Cacophony? I think that's cacophony. Of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent. Grading waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Scene. Cuisine. Tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Or playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless po pool of meaningless. Load me. Load me? Wait, what? Hmm. That's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait. Is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Oh, I get it. That, that was kind of like a... That was a foreshadow, kind of. In other words, there's going to be big decisions coming up, so I need to make sure I save. That way, if I want to talk to someone, then, or I want to change something up, I can just go back. But I don't, because I like the way this is going so far, and I'm not going to change it. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Froggy! Huh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. Uh, you're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really, I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Uh-huh. Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people do. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's not just a poem. It's a froggy poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw. You want to write something for me? 
That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes, when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh? It is? Well, I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Froggy. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Okay. Wow, this is a long one. Okay. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles. All in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like explore- <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I know that's supposed to be serious, but... Uh, okay, anyway. Uh, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow the dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shell could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Wow, that, that's, holy crap, yeah, exactly. Did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. So you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing's like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm going to keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, time for Natsuki. Hmm? I liked your last one better. Huh? Really? Well, yeah, I could tell you were more daring with this one, but you're really not good enough for that yet. You feel it fell flat. Ow. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning just by using annoying and complicated language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. Yuri's head over heels for all this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Huh. 
Making your reader look so hard for all this deep meaning is just an excuse to having no meaning at all. I guess that's one way to look at it. Everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Uh, anyway, here's my poll. <clears throat> okay, apparently she does not like me. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to t like spiders too? That's why I'm not her friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Okay. <clears throat> Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday was too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you have to explain complicated issues with such simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares that someone likes what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. You're a robot to something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Uh, yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she says something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. That's why he has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too. So look forward to it. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit in front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, oh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're doing... We're going to be performing. Performing? Per um, Monica? Yeah, we're all going to be having a poetry performance. 
Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it on all the posters and in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's a bit, not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until the last couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best shot. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each of us sorry, each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that literature is all about. Yeah! It's about the exp it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right! And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with the others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no other choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri detective glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. I... I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha! That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway... Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite the poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind her for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way We Fly. <clears throat> Monica be begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is it simply a natural... I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the... Recitation? The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fouled up all of a sudden? Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances up at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her, 
quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and a structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm going next then. Sayori hops up out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. <clears throat> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're re reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Say, so or begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is, it's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Froggy liked it! I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely, but it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Uh huh. I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Oh, now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Froggy. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Froggy lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Ow. 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 Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Might as well go and get this over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection to what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. Let's now up a step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me. Make me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. I'm not exactly confident in my own writing. It's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I'm finished, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, and as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well... You at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I could put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. 
That's no, that's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. Probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for this club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and in person, Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two. Always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. I make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Froggy. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked me to walk home with you. Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? Uh, what kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> okay, I know what's going on here. This is a big decision because if I say Sayori, she's going to stop being as well of a friend. But considering I haven't really been trying to get on Sayori's good side... Uh, this is a hard one. If I was going to be completely honest, which I am, I have been completely honest with everything I picked through this game. I've been doing it as if I was the one picking these things. So I guess... Uh, I'm sorry! Does that thought of that make my heart pound? Exactly. I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down. So, isn't she so beautiful and smart? Uh, that has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore. You know. Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation throws off and I'm left feeling awkward. But, it was kind of her fault for trapping me in such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Oh, that was a tough one. Alright, let's see. We're gonna do it. Anger? Hmm.
Okay. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing the piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Oh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part in the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Hey, I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because, it's right in your name. Mon Ica. Huh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Hey, <laughs> Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in a corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori gives, shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. A worriedly glance at Sayori's face before returning back towards everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through the, some papers at her desk. Froggy, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little into this a little too much, but it seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I guess I haven't noticed anything about her. Monica appears across the room as Sayori, who is idly dragging a, rub a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Froggy. You certainly know a lot of know her better than anyone else. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. To always talk to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew any things. So I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Huh? Are you sure about that? 
She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Froggy. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sarah talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now that it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Froggy. Have you thought about that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? No, oh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to her conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I tried to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meanfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know what I won't be able to... That I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watched her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear from her. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm laying this way on me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri appearing at me from over her book, but she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation, so I have no choice but to approach myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit down, sit in one next to her own. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax. I didn't even do anything. You didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that what I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. I, I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Oh, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little bit off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So, I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Huh? Sorry. I didn't mean to say that something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sarah and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, oh, I see. Then perhaps it's a bit unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Froggy, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Oh, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm, I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerism on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today too, and I also feel the some, some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case, Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I, I guess. You don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries 
are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That, that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you've given me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do something reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Okay. Yeah, okay. Alright, so, we're going to end this one here. I hope all of you enjoyed it, and I will, of course, see all of you in the next one.